What's up everybody, I'm Greg from Redbeard's Garage and today we're using Performance 670 parts and building a Predator 670 into a monster. First we need to remove the two bolts and four nuts holding on the muffler. Now pull off the air box assembly. Take out the two nuts on the metal flange. There are two Phillips head screws on each side of the air filter assembly. Remove the vacuum hose on the bottom of the filter assembly. There are six bolts holding on the fan shroud. Now use a 10 millimeter wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the choke and the throttle cable. The ignition box is held on by a nut and a bolt. Once removed, unplug the wiring harness to remove the ignition box. There are two bolts holding on the voltage regulator. Four bolts hold on the cool packs to the block. Remove the bolt holding the cool wire out of harm's way. Take out the bolt holding the small black box to the heat shield. Three bolts hold on the flywheel fan. Remove the flywheel bolt from the crankshaft. We now need to use a flywheel puller. Bolt the puller to the flywheel using three 8mm 2 inch long bolts. Then tighten the long threaded rod in the center to force the flywheel off the crankshaft. There are two bolts on the bottom and one on the upper left holding on the inner heat shield. Remove the three bolts holding on the oil cooler. Remove the retaining bolts holding the heat shields to the head. Two bolts hold the starter to the block. A plastic clip holds the choke arm to the throttle assembly. We can now remove two bolts holding the throttle assembly to the block. Unpin the springs to disconnect the assembly. A 10 millimeter socket and flathead screwdriver will allow us to take out the governor arm.
We can now remove the intake manifold. We need to unhook the vacuum hose to the pulse pump to be able to pull the manifold from the block. Remove the valve cover with a 10 millimeter socket and loosen the three millimeter hex head retainers on the rockers. Slide the rocker pin out to remove the rockers and the push rods. I use an impact to remove the four head bolts. Now we can lift the head from the block and remove the head gasket. Make sure the piston is at top dead center to make removing these retainer pins easier. There are nine bolts holding on the crankcase cover. Pry gently on the side cover to remove it. Slide the cam out and remove the lifters. There are two bolts holding the oil sensor to the block. Remove the nut with the wire passing through and pull the oil sensor. We can now remove the clip holding the governor arm in the block. Now I can remove the four rod cap bolts and slide out the piston. Performance 670 provided us with all the parts to build this engine into a monster. For the valve train in this engine, we'll be using roller rockers, heavy valve springs, and billet valve covers. For longevity and strength, we'll be using the billet piston rods with insert style bearings. In this build, we're going to be using the 506 cam. We'll be running a can and air filter and billet air filter adapter. To catch any unwanted blow by, we'll be running the aluminum catch can. When pulling the piston, it's important to remember the orientation of the arrows on the piston surface as well as rod placement. The rod will be flat on one side and rounded on the other. The flat sides of both pistons set against one another. We must now remove the wrist pin. 
There's a small circlet that we can pry out with a small pick. Be careful because these can go flying. Push on the wrist pin to slide it out. Make sure to match up your new piston rods with the old to make sure orientation is correct. Lube the piston and wrist pin and install the new rod. Snap the ring back into the piston and make sure it's fully seated. There are side cover spacers on the cam and the crankshaft. If using the original side cover gasket, you can use the factory spacers. We are using RTV, so we will use the provided spacers from Performance 670. The spacers will give the cam and crankshaft the right amount of play side to side. Now remove the seal from the governor hole and drill the hole out with a 5 16 drill bit. Tap the hole with a 3 8 tap and make sure to clean all the metal debris from inside the block. Install a 3 8 inch bolt to block off the hole and use some red or blue Loctite to seal it. We can now lube the piston sleeves and install the piston and rod back into the block. Lube the rod bearings and make sure the ring gaps are separated 120 degrees apart. The left hand piston goes in arrow up. Use a piston ring compressor to get the piston installed. I use a wooden handle of a hammer to slide the piston back into the block. Dip the rod bolts in some assembly oil and install them into the rods. The right hand piston goes in arrow down. Torque the rod bolts to 10 pounds, alternating from bolt to bolt, adding 5 foot pounds after every pass until reaching the 20 foot pound torque spec. We can now lube and install our lifters. Lube the cam lobes and install the cam while lining up the dots on the cam and crankshaft.
Install the side cover spacers. Remove the governor gear from the side cover. A small clip holds the gear to a shaft. Bend the opening of the clip and slide the gear off and make sure to get the washer riding behind the gear. Tap the oil sensor hole with a 7 16 tap. Make sure and clean up all metal debris inside the block. Install the side cover and torque to 16 foot-pounds. Make sure to use the two longer bolts in the bottom left and top right holes. To install the new valve springs, I use a valve spring compressor mounted in a vise. Collapse the springs with the tool and remove the retaining clips. Install the new springs and reinsert the retaining clips. The head is now ready to be installed on the block. Oil the head bolts and torque them to 15 foot-pounds alternating from bolt to bolt. Add 5 foot-pounds after every pass until reaching 26 foot-pound torque spec. With the head torqued back on we can install the heat shields. I will be using performance engineering cup washers to give this engine a more performance look. Slide the push rods back in and install the new roller rockers. Use a feeler gauge and set the lash to eight thousandths of an inch. Install the O-ring on the billet valve covers and install on the head. Now we can put the spark plug back into the block. The heat shield and oil cooler can now be installed. Now we can install the starter back onto the block. The inner heat shields can now be installed.
I have made a crankshaft stop out of an old 40 series CVT pulley. With the stop installed, I can torque the flywheel down to 60 foot-pounds. I use red Loctite on the fan shroud standoffs. We can now install the cool packs. Set the cool gap to 15 thousandths of an inch with a feeler gauge. Install the wire guard back onto the engine to protect the cool wires. Now install the intake manifold back on and route the wires out of harm's way. I will be removing the pulse pump off the engine and mounting it in a safer spot. Install the flywheel fan back on with the three bolts. I have drilled holes to route my pulse lines through my side cover to my catch can. Install the throttle assembly back onto the block. I had to backtrack and remove the carb from the manifold. When doing the performance build on the 670, you need to pull the electric fuel shutoff from the bottom of the carb and remove the metal plunger. Install the shutoff back into the carb while leaving the wiring harness off as well. The engine runs lean from factory and the fuel shutoff keeps the engine from running after the key is in the off position. This is irrelevant with the performance build of this engine. To use the stock throttle assembly, I have taken a 3 8 bolt and bored a pit in the top. Then I cut a small piece of rod stock and welded to the top of the bolt. The bolt will then thread into the tapped governor hole and be used as a pivot point for my throttle. I use a brass bushing so parts won't bind. Bolt the voltage regulator back onto the heat shield. Now we can install the O-ring in the air filter adapter and slide on our k &N air filter. We can now remove the low oil sensor box on the starter and discard it. For oil, I use 10W30 with Lucas TB Zinc Plus to help break in the engine.
Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts. And when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. We install Go Power Sports large headers to test this engine out, but we'll later build a custom Hit that subscribe board. button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.